everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm going to tell you about a book by Tilbury House Publishers called Sylvia Rose and the Cherry Tree. It's written by Sandy Shapiro Hurt. And I don't even want to make, is it illustrated by Cindy Yan? Not sure. Um, okay, so you can see the name. I probably butchered it, so I'm not even going to try anymore. This book, again, is a rhyming book. So the story is told in rhyming couplets brought to life by vibrant, magical illustrations. It spins a story of adventure, imagination, and the importance of home. So I'm going to read this aloud to you guys, and we have a giveaway that's going to be on our blog where you can enter to win a copy of this book, a hardcover copy. So we thank Tilbury House Publishers for making that giveaway possible. And as always, entries in the giveaway will be to like this video, share this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, and comments on this video. So you can go ahead and get those out of the way and then go to the blog. I'll put a link in the description that will take you right to the blog post and you can enter using the raffle copter widget. Okay, so let's, let me just tell you a little bit about what happens in this book. Bold and adventurous Sylvia Rose loves visiting the animals and trees of the forest. Sylvia and her favorite cherry tree share almost everything, including dancing and stories, but they can't travel the world, the world together because the tree is rooted deep into the earth. Determined to overcome this obstacle, Sylvia Rose enlists her animal friends to uproot the glorious tree, and they set off globetrotting together, taking in the wonders of the world from the Eiffel Tower to the Sydney Opera House, each sight more amazing than the last. Back home in the forest, however, the animals begin to suffer without the food and shelter of their life-sustaining cherry tree. Can the tree give up her newfound freedom and return to her role in the forest ecosystem? So let's see what happens, okay? Very beautiful illustrations. Okay, that's the inscription. Let's get to the story. All right. This very strange tale began in May, in a friendly forest on a sunny day. Skipping along a path in the wood, danced Sylvia Rose, and wow, she was good. Laughing and leaping came Sylvia Rose, whirling and twirling on twinkly toes. She was instantly loved by the woodland creatures. She had lovely manners and mischievous features. But mostly the animals thought it a treat to see a young girl keep such a great beat. As she danced to the tune of her very own song, raccoons and chipmunks danced along. Two doves, a fox, and two whippoorwills spun and laughed. They couldn't sit still. A grandmother squirrel and a grandfather hare danced as if they hadn't a care. A mother owl and a honeybee danced around the big cherry tree. The animals never had such fun. They all joined in one by one. They begged and pleaded and made her agree to meet the next day at the big cherry tree. Then every day after she'd meet them to dance, they'd wiggle and giggle and boogie and prance. But a sigh of sorrow dampened their glee. What fun I am missing, moaned the big cherry tree. I bet you can dance it, Sylvia Rose. Your limbs wave like arms and your roots curl like toes. Yes, said the tree, then started to weep. But I can't really move. My roots run too deep. I've seen not a bit of this great big vast land beyond what I see from this place where I stand.
The tree wept like a willow, and pined like a pine, sighed like a hemlock, and drooped like a vine. But Sylvia Rose remained optimistic. They just had to figure out one great big logistic. She climbed in the branches, the better to see how one goes about moving a big cherry tree. I've got it, she said. Here's what must be done. We'll dig up your roots from the ground one by one. We can give you a paw and it shouldn't take long. We'll just dance as we do and sing out a song. So they all went to work on the roots of the tree and before long, and before very long, it could dance and was free. As it wiggled and giggled and shook all about, birds, bugs, and squirrels came tumbling out. I'll show you the world, said the girl to the tree. We'll dance all around it. There's so much to see. But the tree was concerned and asked, do you think we'll be able to stop for my roots to drink? Why, of course, she replied, no worries at all. Without water, I know. You would dry up and fall. So they said their goodbyes and joined branches in hand to begin their adventures to faraway lands. They danced to the desert for a very quick look, then straight to the prairie to drink at a brook. They danced to the seashore and up a great mountain and to very old cities where they drank from old fountains. They saw wonderful things as they spun and they twirled, the most wonderful things you can see in the world. But back home, the forest creatures had trouble. They needed the tree to return on the double. The sparrows who lived in the tree were dismayed. Without their safe home, they were tired and afraid. The family of wood mites had run out of mite, with no wood to eat and a huge appetite. The chipmunks were homeless, just like the rest. For years, the tree's trunk had hidden their nest. The owls were exhausted. The owl was exhausted. She was up day and night and could no longer get her hoo-hooing quite right. Without their tree, they were all in great need, but the creatures discussed it and finally agreed that they'd give it more time, just a bit more to see if they would all need to move to a new, different tree. Indeed, they all said it was better to wait. It's so hard to find good real estate. So they banded together and labored like champs to set up crude shelters and makeshift, and makeshift camps. They hoped what they built would suffice for a bit and the tree would miss them the way they missed it. Meanwhile, the cherry tree, come to find out, felt pangs in its heartwood while traveling about. It was growing tired of being a tourist. It did miss its creatures and its spot in the forest. These feelings were shared by Sylvia Rose, who was homesick and tired. From her head to her toes, she too missed the forest. Though their travels were great and was dreaming of home, she just couldn't wait. So they set off again with branches and hands to make their way back to familiar lands. They danced all day and all through the night till the edge of the forest they loved was in sight. Imagine the joy, imagine the glee when the creatures spotted the girl in the tree. They sang and they danced like never before, thrilled that the two had returned from their tour. It is swell, said the tree, to dance and to leap, but oh, how I miss my roots running deep. I shall never again take my place here for granted. Now what do you say that we get me replanted? So that's what they did. Every creature around began digging and burying roots in the ground. They danced as they did it and sang out a song, and the tree was rooted again before long.
Birds filled its branches and chipmunks its trunk, which they shared with a very nice new little skunk. Wood mites got munching and cocoons were respawned and it dawned on the tree how it loved everyone. How the life in its limbs made it feel so complete and the spot where it stood was nothing but sweet. But the story's not over, as you might suppose, until we find out about Sylvia Rose. When the forest was whole and complete once again, and the creatures had homes, what did she do then? Well, they begged and pleaded and made her agree to meet the next day at the big cherry tree. And every day after she met them and danced, they wiggled and giggled and boogied and pranced on her twinkly toes on the path in the wood Dan Sylvia Rose, and wow, she was good. That's a delightful book. Okay, so a little bit about the author. Since her childhood in Maine, since her childhood in a Maine coastal forest, Sandy Shapiro Hurt has been passionate about ecology and the abundant life the forest supports. She left Maine to pursue a career in film production, but she returned to her roots with her husband, daughter, a family dog, and a menagerie of chickens. This is her first children's book. And the illustrator left behind her small city in China, traveling thousands of miles to New York City to realize her dream of becoming a published artist. She received her BFA in illustration from Pratt Institute in 2013, and has since worked as an illustrator in the gaming industry and for children's books and other media. Okay, so you can learn more at the publisher's website, but this will all be on the raffle copter giveaway because you can visit and get extra entries for that stuff. So that's so that is uh, Sylvia Rose and the Cherry Tree. It's a delightful book. It's a great book for spring. It's a great book for Easter. It's a great book for showing your children, you know, just how animals depend on our trees and our forest and ecology and all of that. Wonderful. Wonderful for the home or the classroom. So let me know your thoughts on it, what you think about it. And there will be a link too, if you just can't wait to see if you've won um, to purchase the book as well. So let me know. Have a great one, everybody. Thanks so much for watching.